Winspiration, the way to the essential. On UK Health Radio, Winspiration brings wisdom and information for an extraordinary future. Together, we can shape the world we want to live in. So let's get real and create the idea. Be extraordinary. Welcome to a new episode of Inspiration Radio and it is the first one in 2023. So a warm and really from the heart welcome in 2023, the new year. So I hope you have a good idea for the new year and when you listen to this episode then you know it's about getting rid of limiting beliefs and have some new ideas what is possible for you and for the world. And not only possibilities, and we know we live in a world, in a universe of unlimited possibilities. But it's so much more about getting clear who we, who you truly are. For me, it's a special trip journey here with the radio. Um, maybe you know I studied law, had a big law office, um, tax accounting company, and I was used that the clients were sitting in front of me. I could see them. And when I was a court and uh, as a lawyer had my case there, it was always with real people directly around me. And so podcasts or this episode here is so different because I can't see you. But anyway, I hope I can touch you, reach you and inspire you. I once radically closed down my law office, all the companies I had, because I realized that's not what I lead truly. It was not my true nature. I get thick, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting my life there, I'm hurting me. At that time, I still believed more, I am the lawyer, I am my body, I am my profession, and I am the big office. But I felt something is wrong, and that's why I closed it down. And today, I like to talk with you about who we really are, who you really are. Maybe you know already, um, and <laughs> please forgive me that I just um, a little bit uh, unsure where you really are in life, because we never spoke so far. Is this your first idea that you might not be your body, or is it so normal for you, you that you know you're not your body, you're not your thoughts, your pure consciousness. So it's really interesting um, talking here and find a way with this radio to express what I really want to give you and how I should do it best that I can reach you. We started in, in November and as you know it's just a little bit more than a month ago and we had some interviews and yeah, I'm also learning and warming up here what to do. And um, it's a big journey for me now going in a kind also of a new me and a new world with this platform here. First of all, it goes round the globe and I worked so far more in the German area as a German with a German speaking area, even if I did workshops in Australia and the US before, not only because after the law stuff, um, I built a network marketing organization which went round the globe. No, so much more than around 20 years ago, 2002, I created a company which name was Win Win and the inspiration idea. Because I grew up knowing if you want something, you need to do it harder and more um, power into it, focus. 
But uh, when we realized in 2002 that in Germany alone there were two million kids living from welfare, and uh, today we have kids in the third or fourth generation in the UK and in, in Germany who just living from welfare. And uh, how should we get them to understand you need to work harder? If they have a family life in generations already, they live just from someone else giving them something. So 20 years ago, we came up with the word inspiration, inspire to win, because they need an inspiration. They need pictures first. And that's what may be the same thing for you today. What kind of picture you can have about your future, the future of mankind, the future of this planet Earth. We are so limited in seeing things because we grew up in a well-defined world. Everybody told us how the world is. So what is really true? I changed in between my company name from win-win to awareness because I realized so um, so yeah, many people don't understand win-win or understand it wrong. I even ask a professor in the university, can uh, I support you and maybe some students to write uh, we call it in German Doktorarbeit, and PhD um, work or in some survey about inspiration and the professor said, ah, oh, no need to that, that's all clear, done. In the moment I was shocked, but then I realized that is a small world view he has. He just studied win-win for the university these game theories, but not for the world. Because if I look out the window, I see, yes, we are far away of living win-win. And I realize most people don't understand win-win. Maybe they think it's profit sharing or whatever, or it's a nice compromise. But to be totally clear, a compromise is always lose lose. Win-win is not possible if we just think on the same level of awareness or consciousness. No, we need to go on a different level. Like Einstein said, if the mind who created the problem can't solve it, we need to see something different. And that is what it's all about. And that's what we try here in Inspiration to really give you information, or not only give you information, I would assume you have not the information, but go in a dialogue with you. And I would love to get feedback and uh, <clears throat> what uh, you understand, how you see the world, what you would love to hear more, or what you think you need to correct me. Please do. Because we all need to understand, if you really want to go for the truth, we need to test all our theories and be happy if we find out they are wrong. Because if a theory is wrong, then we know that it's not the truth and we need to change something and we are ready to go for the truth. The moment we defend the theory, we just get stuck. And we need to understand, we can't prove that a theory is right. It's not possible. We only can prove if it's wrong. And as long we can't prove that it's wrong, okay, we have a theory I guess we can work with. And it brings us a little bit forward. But things are changing. And today we're talking a lot about uh, a new world order. At least you hear it. 
all the time. And most of the time it's connected with kind of conspiracy. Well, that is always those people who say, please keep it like it is, and they have a limited worldview. We need once in a while a new world order. Just look at the history of the planet of humankind. <clears throat> what were the early people 100,000 years ago? What was there? A world order? No, it was not really a, a need because they didn't know what happened 100 kilometers ago. <clears throat> oh, sorry, away. So there was maybe a kind of local order necessary, a tribe order. But the more we as humans evolved and could travel more and had bigger countries, regions to control, then we started with having orders. So the Roman Empire created a world order for their perspective. In Europe we had the Dutch who created an empire, the British created an empire and the Commonwealth still today and they try to have a kind of order. And then the Americans came and now it's not just the power game, America and China, but we see Asia is totally different than 50 years ago. So we need to do things different and one day Africa will play it a bigger role because of two billion people uh, and we somehow ignore them in the world order. But it's also about our awareness. In the 17th century, it says people got less information in their whole life if you have, if you have today in one magazine of the Time magazine. So there's one newspaper filled with so many news people couldn't really handle a few hundred years ago. I grew up in Germany, as you, you know, and the first train we had uh, was from Fürth to Nuremberg. It was a small uh, distance, and the train at that time was supposed to go with a speed of 38 kilometers an hour. And a lot of people, so-called well-educated scientists said, we need to make a wooden wall around the track that nobody sees the train. Because if a train with 38 kilometers rushes in front of you, if you would look at it, you would go crazy in your head because you're not used to such a speed. That's what they're thinking at that time. So today, wow, if you look at Formula One, 200, 300 kilometers, and we watch it, a lot of things changed. So we need to have different orders to organize something. But why a world order? Yeah, simply we call it globalization. Um, we are flying around the world and there are things today, is it a virus, like the coronavirus? Is it the climate topic? So we have more and more things where we see that is not just in our borders and you can't solve it with having a higher wall and a higher border and so on. That's not working. There are things, they just simply global or universal. If we fear once a meteor will come again and crash on the world and maybe kill the whole planet, that is not a national thing. So the more our conscious rises from just a local me to the local tribe to a local region, 
a country, a nation, and then continents and then the world, we always need new orders. But it's also with the modern technology. We have developed so much technology. It's not just when we first started to have the wheel or discover fire. Gosh, what do we have today? I just mentioned it's not so long ago when the first train in Germany with the 38 kilometer per hour speed was there. 150 years later, wow, how do we travel? It's a little bit more than 100 years ago we, in, we discovered how we can fly. It's just around 50, 60 years ago that people go in space. And now there are some people working on yeah, tourism in space. Or a rocket that you can go from one end in the world to the other end in just 30, 40 minutes. Or the hyperloop where you can go with enormous speed, like you say, LA to San Francisco in 45 minutes. So the world is changing with technology. So in everything more details, you know, I born in the 50s and then we knew someone who had a telephone. Today, everybody has a phone, has something. Grandma gives it to the grandchild, the first iPhone or smartphone. They grow up with this. We have the internet and we see an internet, how it's influencing people in countries where they have different politics, religions and everything. If it's Iran, what we see there, or we had the idea <clears throat> this summer in Egypt. So if this is all coming more and more, and now we, we, we change, we see the artificial intelligence is coming, and wow, a lot of jobs are going away. And a lot of people, millions of people, will go out of jobs and not be so easy uh, trained for a new job. In my case, I didn't grow up with a computer. And okay, I know now a little bit more about computers. I can handle a little bit. I'm sitting now here in front of a mic and using the UK Health platform. Wow, it's incredible. I never could have thought about it. 30 years ago. And now that is broadcast in the world. And maybe even to countries where they don't want to hear it. The government, the politicians, the people who are afraid that normal people <clears throat> vote and have a kind of basic democracy. The more we solve with technical solutions, problems, the world goes more complex. If I just look around in the apartment I'm sitting here at the moment in South Africa, because I spent the winter in South Africa, and when I look around a rented apartment here, what we have, if it's a TV, if it's a wheelan, if it's... A <laughs> The dishwasher is his um, lamps, showers. Um, <clears throat> he has a special, um, <clears throat> what is it, system because they have uh, the load shedding here from electricity. How to keep up it, if um, the government <clears throat> stop the electricity for one or two hours here? So, bah, the sofa and everything. Everything what I see here, the fridge, and the food I have in the fridge, everything is incredible, done by other people. Nothing is really made by myself. And it's so different in the world where people were a farmer. 
just organize their food themselves, build their house themselves. And the more we have this complexity, and it goes more and more now, changing the world and changing professions, we reach a new ceiling of complexity. So we can't handle it with what we learned so far. How de we developed our consciousness so far, our emotions so far. And therefore, always, if we have a level of order, it comes more complexity, we need a new level of order. It's like the <clears throat> science of the chaos, and so you need to go from one order to the through the space of confusion to reach a new level of order. And that is what we experience ourselves. And a lot of people are afraid, looking towards the future, feel they are lost. And that because they never found their true self. And society, education, doesn't really want that you find yourself. They just want and teach you that you function. That is a modern education, especially with the industrial age. They needed workers. One professor in Germany says, the education is like for the American male horses. They need to function. And when they're old, we put them aside. They need just to function, to fit in. But we know that we are individuals. You have an really unique fingerprint. You have a unique digestive system. You have the one and only unique way to see the world. You are unique. So what is uniqueness? What is your true self? I suffered a lot. I sh shared that I cancelled all the law offices, tax offices, radically got rid of it, went even more than a million in debts just to get out of it. And then with the next business, I created quite a lot of wealth and could buy all the things I wanted, even I flew with private planes and everything. Had a wonderful apartment in Gibraltar I lived, in the marina, in the Sunchang. But I realized one day I'm depressed, totally depressed with all these wonderful things around me. And just let me make a short break and then I explain why this happened. Yeah, how can someone be depressed when, from the normal standpoint, I, I grew up in a family, we were after the war, kind of poor family, so I never could expect to have those kind of lifestyle that I can travel the world, live in a penthouse in Gibraltar, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, live in wonderful hotels, uh, testing beaches, different places, Bahamas, Australia. Wow, and depressed, how can that be? Because I then realized, it took me a while to really realize it, that I had no really goal anymore in life, so I didn't know why should I go up in the morning. That was the first thing I realized, I said, I have no goal. But then I also asked myself, yeah, what, what should I go for? And there started the journey, or we called then later purpose finding. What is my true essence? Because the wonderful luxury life doesn't make you happy. First of all, nothing on the outside makes you happy. But even it can depress you more 
if you have those wonderful things and you're not happy. And you can only be really, really happy if you know your true self. You can have fun in life. You can compensate. You can party. You can do everything. And on the outside, maybe it looks like, wow, what a lucky guy. But deep inside, there is a real decision. Is this fun or is this really joy of being alive? And I didn't have the joy of being alive. Because when I came on planet Earth and everybody told me how to be, sometimes they say I was born as an apple in a parent family and they all tried to make a good parent out of me, sent me to parent kindergarten, parent school, and so on, but ignored the apple in me. I was not seen. And then I got in a survival strategy. And even with the survival strategy and all the success, couldn't be happy because it was not my true self what was really living. And just with the journey then to go through those survival strategies, so like some people learn you need to die first before you, know, you can live. So let the ego, the survival strategy, die and realize the true essence in life. And then suddenly you can be happy with nothing. And all these surveys about happiness say, mm, money doesn't really make you happy. Yeah, yeah, if it's really um, if you're extremely poor, money helps you to survive and then it comes a kind of happiness. But statistics say uh, up to 5,000 for a family, maybe that helps. Um, increasing the level of happiness, but then not more. If you earn 100,000, 200,000, a million, it doesn't make you any more happy. You only can please your ego. But anyway, don't get me wrong, I love luxury stuff because it makes life easier, more comfortable. And if you have a lot of money, you can do things, you can live your purpose, you can support things more. So, find your true self and then build your life around it. And that changed a lot for me. And from there we started then these <coughs> inspiration, helping more and more people to find their true self. And even if I say the money is not so important, most of them who live their true self have more wealth afterwards because they don't need to compensate, waste money for compensation. They are aligned with what they do, so they are normally even more successful. And then they can hold the wealth. You know, a lot of winners easily lose all again. Because they are not the person who can hold it. So what is your idea for this coming year? First of all, if you don't know exactly who you really, really are, again, you're not your body, you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions. So who are you then? What is consciousness? What is pure consciousness? So if starting the idea, I have a body, and simply just see it as a driver and the car. The driver has a car, but it is not the car. But the driver, the way he drives, you feel in the whole car. If he's driving fast in the corners, oh, the whole car will feel it. 
the wheels will feel it. The way you drive, you use more gas or less gas. You ruin the car, or the car can live long. If you have a car as a driver and just sitting in the car and not really doing something with the car, we can easily understand that is somehow wasted. Now it's about here on planet Earth that the driver uses a car. And ideally uses a car because then when life ends, it's like the driver needs to leave the car. What can the driver really take with him? He can't take the car. And that's why it's not so important to be rich, to buy 100 cars, having a garage with 100 cars, because you can't take one with you. But you can take with you the experience of different cars. You can take with you the experience of the quality, how you can drive a car. So it's so much about the development of the driver. So, and what is it what you plan as a human being for the next year, do you plan what you want to have or what you want to experience? What you want to learn and what you want to grow into? And I recommend for my clients, if you plan a year, plan First, your time, the me time, the me free time or the me development time as you like it. We all heard the concept about money, you know, pay yourself first. But it's with the time, with life, it's the same thing. Pay yourself first. So what is it, what you plan now in this year? And then you can build business around. If you know what you want, then you always ask, what is the best way to achieve this development, to achieve the results? And here we come again. Are you ready, capable of free thinking, dreaming? Because there is no really benefit if you only take goals or ideas in this limited view, world view, what maybe your parents gave you. Getting rid of limiting beliefs, everything is possible. Even if you can't see it, it is possible. So start first with create the ideas. If I see it with adults when we really go for their true self and essence to find out, we can sometimes start with wishlists, what do you want? And adults have a, such a hard time making wish lists. That is only what is a correct wish. Most is what they need or development a little bit better in the career. But no crazy thoughts. And that's why we should be there like a child again, not thinking, not limited, no memories, no shoulds, musts, and so on. Just feel what would be great. What is it? Do you want to travel the world, private planes? You want to meet whatever famous people. You want to live in different places. 
whatever it is. I know the examples here, uh, normal examples, because but sometimes they're stretching already people because they're limiting themselves already on the normal level. What you want to be capable of. You see, we have people like Elon Musk who has a crazy idea and makes it happen. So it doesn't need to be big, it doesn't need to be the richest man on planet Earth, but it should give you the example that a lot is possible, a lot more than you maybe at the moment are going for. If there is anything what you say, ah, I don't like that or I heard that, take a look. What could be the opposite that you say, okay, then I do this, or then I solve this problem. If there is anything we say, I wish I could, I wish I had, <sighs> I dream of this partner or whatever. Be careful. The way you think of it, I wish I had, is always programming you that you don't have it. So, ask yourself always, what if? Do I really want it? What if? Who would I be if? And do I really want to be that person? And if you want to accomplish something, um, there's a simple question from Tim Ferriss. He always asks himself, um, if there is something possible to build in 10 years, what does it need that I can build it in six months? And you see, the question forces you to think different. And if you understand that we are living on the level of duality, so where is the task, where is the problem, there must be a solution, even if we don't see it. Maybe even if we, at the moment, don't dare to go for it. So feel. Take your time. With these questions, sit and feel, and look and feel inside. What am I really feeling about this topic? When I think about that, what is it what I'm really feeling? And then figure out, is this anger, fear, sadness? What is on a deeper level? and then check where it's coming from, and then solve it. It's just energy blocks, and everything in the universe is energy and information. So you have maybe blocked energy with an information, and this frequency goes on and on. Whenever you block the energy, it's like a trauma, it's a blocked energy, but you can solve a lot of those things by yourself. Just with the awareness, just feel. Hold a moment, I want this. Can I do this? It feels awkward. No, I don't dare to do it. What is really what I feel? I'm not worthy enough. Some people even, simply it's not about just, I don't love myself enough. But some people even, I'm not allowed to live. Because maybe mommy said, yeah, when you were on the way, I stopped with my education. If you wouldn't have a child, maybe I have studied as well and became a doctor as well and everything. And directly, the child feels guilty. So we all have some of those things. We all have those kind of spells and programs in us. And it's about getting rid of this. Being whole and healthy again. Because then it's so much easier to dream what could be. How the world could be. And we just 
soon we'll talk a little bit more how the world could be. So, how the world could be. This is your individual world. But I dream of a world where companies there to solve the problem for the people. We never need to worry about the future that we have nothing to do as long as there are problems on planet Earth. Wow, there is something to do. And there will always be so-called problems. Because the ceiling of complexity will go higher and higher. <clears throat> we will create new problems. But in the past, when we had the idea that money is the main thing, and coming from whatever, the Neanderthaler who just were hitting you on the head, <clears throat> we came from Rome and Africa and everything, and <clears throat> we're used to slavery and misusing people. Still today we have uh, the problem that most women don't get paid the same amount, salary as men. We're still thinking in this stupid, I really say stupid way <clears throat> of having better and I would I say better people and the other are not people <clears throat> are slaves people or is it more like an animal what is the real thinking where we come from and let's be honest we can be against all this but sometimes we all have the same thought that we feel better than another person or feel smaller than the other person is the same shit just a different direction so if we create a culture that there are companies only for supporting people solving the problems of people and not misusing them ah, then we will create another education system because then in the education it's not about training you to fit in, then we would create a system to encourage people. In the past, we coming from a very limited belief. Here is land. I only can be the king if I have more land than you, for my cow is the water. And today it's about gas and oil that we're fighting <clears throat> and not really sharing um, the world, that everybody gets it. We're fighting now about water. Oh, crazy, it said. What if we come to the understanding that we are one planet, one humanity, one big family, and we just share everything? There can be competition in companies because competition is good to be better but it's like in kind of the Olympic idea make competition to be better like I see it in Switzerland the the tech system is totally different and the <clears throat> cities the communities they decide a lot about the taxes you pay so there is a competition between between the cities who handles everything better with quality of life and low taxes. So that's the creativity. And it's not just, oh, let's take, <clears throat> like the king did it, uh, money from the people and I decide later if it's war, if it's an orgy or whatever we do. 
And we don't need to be really efficient because we just make the taxes higher. Switzerland has a different system. So competition is good. But in the past, when we had the understanding and created the wealth on war and sickness, that is a totally different competition. Then pharmaceutical industries are working <clears throat> maybe too much on creating a new thickness and not making it obsolete. War, we get the whole creativity and weapons and destroying things. What if we change 180 degrees our thinking and say the future is the wealth and the future we make of peace and health? That would be a totally different thinking. Is it possible? Yeah, sure. And who's responsible for it? You. Because you and me, we need to change. If we don't change, if we have the same old behavior, nothing will change. And that is what we are going for. And that's what I want to use this platform here, UK Health Radio and the Inspiration episodes, to really work on the idea how we can develop to the person who can handle peace and health and go in this full potential, feel whole and healthy and so much you want, wealthy, not because of money, just because of your essence and your purpose. That's what you need. Some animals need that, some flowers need that, but you don't need all more money. And the crazy thing is super billionaires have a lot of money. They never can eat it all. But they're afraid. They're still afraid. So, and how should the society system be then? How should the government be? How should the society be structured? I'm not believing that we get this dream, this I just call it win-win society, that we get this paradise on earth in a top-down system. No, the king never will do it. The presidents in China or America, they will not do it. Because this organism is protecting itself. It is our job ourselves, in ourselves. It's about us that we understand that we are responsible for what we experience. That's not the outside. And that we stop hoping that the outside will solve any problem. That we stop believing that luxury goods can make us happy. That we stop believing that anything in the outside can really be the part what make, gets me out of victimhood and develop me. No, it's all an inside job. It's an inside job, self-responsibility. And so we start with self-awareness and then to self-empowerment. And from there, we go <coughs> to what we call then the really conscious decision what you want to experience and the understanding that you are 100% consciousness your consciousness and we are all one but we decide for different experiences but it's a big 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 family we are all one. We all come from the quantum soup or whatever you call it. And if we get out of separateness and we understand the oneness, when we stop fighting, then we can love us all because if I can love me, I can love you. And when someone said, you need to love your enemy, it's not about loving an enemy. It's less 
loving the other one because it's me. So I love you, you who are listening. And I love to share more of this over the year with interview partners or with those kind of reflection that you can create a wonderful year, the best year so far. And that's one of my book titles and slogans. Be sure the best is yet to come. This was another episode of Winspiration Wisdom and Information to support you getting out of illusions, false identifications, limiting beliefs. We all have the power and potential to be more, do more, have more, give more. Reality is what is possible in the universe and the best is yet to come. If you want to dive deeper into possibilities of creating the extraordinary future, go to inspiration.global or to wolfgangsonnenburg.com. More information and some free downloads like the email program Dream Goals Reality or a copy of the book The Best is Yet to Come can be found on the UK Health Radio website under the Listen on Demand and Presenters section. Join us again next week on the Winspiration Show for more wisdom and information to create your extraordinary future.